is this the best inshore saltwater reel out there? Hi guys, I'm Justin here at the Salt Strong Reel Room, and we're going to talk today about the 2021 iCast Saltwater Spinning Reel winner, the new Daiwa Saltist MQ. A lot of hype about this reel, a lot of people are talking about it, and we just got a shipment of these reels here at our shop site, fishstrong.com. You guys got to check it out. But I want to go into this reel. We'll talk about some features of what's been added to the newer model of the Daiwa Saltist, because the Saltist model has been around in the Daiwa lineup for a number of years. And this is their new pimped out version, if you will. We're going to talk about the features of this reel, some pros and some cons, and let you guys know whether we really think this is the best reel reel out there for the money. So the first thing you guys are going to notice on the Saltist MQ is the MQ name, which is their monocoque body design. And what that really means is that it's a one piece bodied frame. So on a traditional spinning reel, they're usually a side plate that's held in place by three or four screws. And they're kind of like rectangular in shape and they're compressed when they're when you tighten the screws down. And there's usually a perimeter seal inside. And, and that for the most part is the traditional way of making a body for a spinning reel. That compression combined with the seal helps keep water out. Well, Daiwa said, you know what? We're gonna do things differently. We're gonna create this monocoque body style. They've actually had it in their Certate series for a number of years. Then they made a, kind of a reintroduction with the BGMQ that came out about a year and a half ago. That was very successful and they said, you know, we called it MQ body designs for Daiwa is kind of the future of spinning reels. They kept up with that, incorporated their MQ body design to the new Saltist, which I think is a big deal because it reduces the overall sizing of what the Saltist was. So the BG and the Saltist kind of have their own unique sizing. Their 2500 or their 3500 size in general is a little bit bigger than their LT bodied 3000s, 4000s, and other manufactured 3000, 2500 size reels. They're on the bigger side. But this MQ body design allowed them to reduce the overall size, reduce the weight, and that way you can get all the great features you want in a low compact body, but you have increased drag, you have you know easier turn of the handle. I mean, just a, a smaller compact body is gonna make it better for inshore fishing. And even their larger five and 6,000 sizes are gonna be lighter weight overall and just gonna allow for you know a, a better feel on the water when you're fishing all day long. So right here, if you look up close guys, you'll notice this is one of the big things that stick out on the Saltist MQ. So. I'm a big fan of round knobs. This aluminum round knob is rare to find. Actually, I don't know of anybody else right now that has an aluminum round knob for an inshore size spinning reel. This is on all of their sizes. Whether you go from the 2,500 all the way up to their 14,000 and bigger, they're all gonna have an aluminum round knob on there. And some of you guys might see that and say, that's different, you know, because most manufacturers include like a rubber eye-shaped knob or a T-handle or like a paddle style or Hypalon foam grip, because all these different types of handles. But personally, when I'm winding down on a fish, I don't want to use two fingers and grab a paddle handle. That's me personally, but I like this full round grip. It just is comfortable when I'm turning the handle. I have more area that I can grab my whole hand on and wind down when I'm you know, tightened up to a fish. I watch a lot of videos of when I'm setting the hook on redfish and fighting fish and I see myself grabbing the entirety of a handle. So I'm excited to have something that's rounded in more of a compact body size for inshore fishing because I feel like I'm going to have more control over that fish when I'm hooked up. So kind of in talking about the overall size of the Saltist MQ, you have their air rotor design, which is kind of this etched out, uh, aired out rotor to reduce weight. But to add to that, it's made out of Zion. So it's an it's their version of an, like a composite plastic. It's very, very lightweight, but it's more durable than magnesium, which is crazy. So Zion material is usually incorporated in Daiwa's higher end products. It's appropriately fit by adding a Zion rotor here in their Saltist MQ. You're not gonna feel really any resistance when you turn the handle, not just because of the fluidity of how they do their gears, but because there is no weight in this rotor. So it makes it super light and very smooth when you turn the handle. And then what everybody's gonna ask on the Saltus MQ is, does it have mag seal? The answer is yes, it does have mag seal. And on top of that, if you guys know what mag seal is, it's essentially a ferrous fluid that works in conjunction with a magnetized plate underneath here. And it creates this kind of a low pressure seal where water and contaminants can't make their way down the main shaft 
and into the anti-reverse uh, you know, clutch mechanism here inside the body of the reel. But on top of that, because of this MQ design, similarly to that BGMQ down there, there's this threaded cap that sits over top of that plate that holds the mag seal. So you have a combination of compression and this ferrous fluid that is creating both a physical and a chemical block to make sure water and contaminants don't make their way on the inside. That's legit. That's legit, guys. Like, that's really, really cool that they figured out how to combine both factors of that chemical sealing and a physical perimeter barrier. I don't know of a better way to seal it. I, th I think that's, they've, they've done both in one. I think that's really cool. So what I want to do is I want to take this handle off and I want to just take a look here. Like what's on the ballistic and soon to be the ballistic MQ, I would anticipate you have a physical rubber perimeter seal, just a, just a good light pressure seal to make sure water is not going to creep past the handle and into the body. Obviously the monocoque body design, there are, th I think there's threading here back behind this threaded plate or this, uh, there's rubber seals behind this threaded plate to make sure water doesn't intrude in. Um, and just a little feature that I like, this main shaft, as it goes up and down through the rotor, there's this light black rubber seal that's also a deterrent that sits over top of this, uh, this rotor retaining nut. And that's going to help prevent water from riding down that main shaft and then onto the seal and it's not going to make its way down. So that's kind of your first layer of defense. But then if for any reason, although unlikely water were to make its way down that, that main shaft, it's going to make contact with this threaded plate and then it would have to make contact with mag seal and just at the end of the day, water's not getting by this puppy. Like it, it's a very well sealed product. So to talk about the drag guys, on the newer dial reels, you guys have noticed that even on the 2,500, the 3,000 and 4,000 size, there's 22 pounds of drag. Same is gonna apply to the Saltist MQ. I think on the 4,000, you jump up to like 26 and a half pounds of drag. It's just ridiculous. And on smaller bodied LT reels that are made out of a, a composite material that's lighter in weight, in the big scheme of things, you might not use that much drag pressure and, and a reel of that design and that material might not ever need to get to that point. But to have a solid aluminum body in a compact, rigid design and have 22 pounds of drag, you could push it to the limit. You could take it if you wanted to pop 20 pounds of braid on here. You'd have to have a pretty beefy rod, but this drag ability and how far it can go is is a, is a proportionately fit to this type of reel. So I think that's the best balance to look at. I mean, you're going to get the most out of the drag with this type of reel is what I'm trying to say. So guys, to continue to be unbiased with this product, there are a couple cons that we need to address with the Saltist MQ. The first being, and when you guys go on and check it out, it's going to be cost. This is $299. It's a pretty penny. It's an investment. It's what you got to look at it if you were to be the kind of person to want a Saltist MQ. There are a lot of great features in this reel. Do you need them to catch inshore fish? Maybe not. But if you're the type of person that wants to enjoy high quality gear, this would be the path that you go. And you need to be cognizant of the fact that it's an investment. You're investing in your gear if you're going to go this route. The second con that I've noticed Really, it's it's minor, but we're going to see how this holds up long term. There's a boot here in the bottom of the design of the BGMQ, the Saltist MQ, and I think a lot of their MQ body designs. And this, I'm not sure if it's plastic or what it's made out of. This bottom boot is held in place by what looks like a kind of a, a hex key. And there's likely a perimeter rubber seal inside here, but they made their monocoque body design that's solid, it's rigid, it's well sealed. And then they have kind of this rash guard, uh, well, this, this rash guard on the bottom that I think is intended to prevent dings and if it were to get damaged on a boat or you know knocked around, it's meant to be protection. But once you take that whole boot off, you can see under onto the inside of the main gear and you know the oscillation cam and the pinion, you can see inside of the reel once you remove this boot. Um, personally, I think that it all should be one piece body design, but the BGMQ has been out for a year and a half. It's had that same boot design. And so far the reviews of the BGMQ after you know a year and a half of use has been excellent. Nobody's had anything negative to say so far about whether this has been an issue with water intrusion. Um, but it is something to consider that this is a separate piece. It's not part of the rest of the aluminum body that is the MQ body design on the Saltist. So to sum it up guys, is this reel worth it? Is it the best inshore reel out there? 
I think that it's a darn good inshore reel. It's it's something that I would personally fish with and I would invest in. Um, I like the aluminum round knob. I love that it's mag sealed with that compression plate. Uh, I love that it's a compact aluminum reel. I like the rigidity of aluminum reels, but I don't have to worry about the weight that you know previous traditional aluminum body reels had. Um, I like that it's got a carbon fiber drag stack, lightweight Zion rotor. I think everything about it was meticulously designed to be kind of a finesse, heavy duty, kick it around reel. And I know that if I'm gonna invest $300 into this, it's gonna be an investment that I'm gonna be very proud of. And I know this reel would last me a long time. So guys, if you wanna get yourself a Saltist MQ, a bunch of other you know products on our shop page, fishstrong.com, you guys gotta go over there and check it out. We have some of the Saltist MQs left. We got BGMQs, we've got all types of reels, hooks, lures, leader, anything you guys need. Head on over to fishstrong.com and check it out. And we will see you guys on the water. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America because we literally guarantee that you'll start catching more fish in less time. And we do this by providing you with premium education, an exclusive online fishing community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. So to learn more, go to saltstrong.com, and we'll see you in the Insider Family soon.